Hello again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. If you're a big Elvis fan like us, this is your society, our society, the EAP Society. Remember that uh, members of the EAP Society get more. Be sure to go to EAPsociety.com. Click on Become a Member if you'd like to become a member and help us make all of this even bigger and even better and do more for the Elvis community. Now, we you might look at this and think, hey, that looks like a bunch of LPs. And uh, almost. This is fascinating. These are LPs for the eyeball. Uh, <laughs> there was, uh, for a brief time in the early video era, a format called LaserDisc. This was after video disc, which is a much lesser format, which we might have a few of those around here, too. We do somewhere. have a few of those as well. Yeah. <laughs> this is better. LaserDisc are like um, early DVDs that are the size of an LP. Yeah. And you had to flip over to see the complete film. Yep. Um, I did not have many laser discs, though I did seek one out. I had to get the one of the lost performances, which we'll not talk about in this episode, but a later episode, because yep. it still is the highest available resolution copy of that particular title. Sadly. <laughs> Sadly. Sadly. Uh, so I loved this format. One, because of the size. It was, it was like LPs, even though I was more of a CD guy. Uh, but since that didn't really exist for a short while, uh, and especially not a lot of Elvis movies were even on DVD. Right. But they were on Laserdisc. And Laserdisc was a, I felt at the time, a massive step up from VHS. Yeah, the the in terms of uh, image quality, it, it has more resolution. It has a more stable image. It does, and I believe they had progressive frame rates as well. Um, so you'd get a lot more image for your dollar, even though the dollars were a lot higher than with VHS. Yeah, well, depending on what you're after, but right. uh, at the time, like when I picked a lot of these up. I believe they were about the same price as VHS tapes. Wow. Okay. So, so at the time, they were a good investment. Totally. Especially since, uh, you know, my dad had a Laserdisc player. Yeah. And uh, ha funny enough, had a Laserdisc karaoke player. And it would also play movies because a lot of those Laserdisc karaoke's were like CDG, except giant. Cool. And one of the biggest makers of laser discs especially karaoke laser discs was pioneer artists ah so this is the first one we're going to show you loving you i mean really cool i mean we're talking holy crap early and i will say uh in terms of um Cover shots that are from the wrong movie. This is one of the less egregious one. Yes. It's from Jailhouse Rock, but it was filmed at least the same year as Loving You. Yeah, except for the back, we've... Uh... We got a picture of Toby Quimper in Loving You. Who knew? <laughs> Maybe he was Dick, Deke Rivers' next-door neighbor. <laughs> His uncle or something. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so this is... So this is Loving You. Now, the really cool thing about this format... So, okay, this is cool. He had the talent. All he needed was the chance. Deke Rivers is a small town boy with big time talent. Holding down a series of menial jobs, he's going nowhere until an accidental onstage appearance shows off a style of singing all his own. An ambitious press agent packs him off on a road tour. His music catches on like wildfire and he wakes up to find himself on nationwide TV. Sound like anybody you know? That's what it says here. Uh, Elvis Presley, the legendary king of rock and roll, has sold more than 500 million records, stars in Loving You, a film that captures the energy, the excitement, the explosive popularity of Elvis's early years. It's all here. The wild crowds, the gyrations that cause a fervor, the backstage deals, and the mounting confusion of a young man experiencing too much too soon. In only his second screen appearance, Elvis acts with the nervous intensity of a rising superstar, feeling his way through this important new expression of his talent. Working from a fiction script his natural shyness shows through but on stage elvis sings with complete authority performing hits like loving you teddy bear got a lot of living to do and other unforgettable songs from his early repertoire elvis is gone a tragic loss at age 42 but the legend of elvis will never die and loving you takes a dramatic look at how that legend was born yeah in a lot of ways we've talked about before this is kind of the first elvis biopic 
Yeah. Even though he's not called Elvis, it is very much a film about Elvis. I tell you, I would be interested in taking a look at this laser disc to see what it looks like. Yeah. Especially the ones that don't say letterboxed, because there's a chance these could be open mat transfers, hmm. which would actually give us more visual information at the top and bottom of the frame that's not on the DVD version. Yeah. So, okay, so, so you all get to see here is, oh, okay, so this tells you, uh, warning to avoid danger of suffocation. Keep the plastic bag away from babies and children. Okay, no kidding. No kidding, folks. And pull it on out so everybody can see what a laser disc looks like. Look at that! <laughs> is that not the most 80s thing you've ever seen? That is just marvelous. It's like a record made of lasers. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of played with lasers. It's like a record made of lasers. Anyway, sorry. Cost one million dollars. <laughs> you can you can do your makeup in this. Look at that thing. Here, this uh you can see yourself in that thing. You can see the other half of the set that's not finished. But um so side A, uh side B, let's see, manufactured, uh printed in the USA. And I mean, I will say that I mean it's gorgeous. It is. They're they're really impressive to see, especially up close. Oh look, you can see the uh, you can see the back of the uh, <laughs> back of the album. Yeah, the, the laser disc, not the album. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah, you can see you the, can back, see old the back Toby of the, there. Yeah, you can see Toby. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. Notice in your reflections how to catch it, <laughs> but. Pretty cool, and I don't see it doesn't say it doesn't say letterbox, so yeah, so this is only the first uh, that we're going to look at this specific one because we will see if we're talking open mat. Yeah, and if we are, we might have to do a transfer of that. Bit. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do a transfer oh, if yeah. it is. Um, and we should take a look at King Creole for the same reasons. Yeah, because it doesn't say letterbox. It might be, but. We Always can, worth a look. We can share a screenshot uh, just for educational purposes. Sadly, mm -hmm. we can't share video. But, um, yeah. So, the next one. Now, for those of you that collected the VHS tapes, uh, especially the early VHS tapes, a lot of these are going to look familiar to you. So, uh, wait, where was King Creole? Mm -hmm. right. There. We got two different King Creoles. We have Creoles. two different King Creoles. This is um, interesting. This has a picture of Ross Carpenter from Girls, Girls, Girls. Yeah. On the front and the back for consistency. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently Danny Fisher has taken a vacation. Yeah. We're seeing Ross. Yeah. Who, uh, fan theory, Ross Carpenter from Girls, Girls, Girls is actually the brother of Dr. John Carpenter from Change of Habit. There you go. And my evidence for this is they bear a striking resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. But yeah, so this is from 1986, Viacom. Uh, King of the Screen, when he, first woo when he was first wooed by Hollywood, Elvis appeared in roles that were designed to establish him as a serious actor while capitalizing on his musical talents. The four films that he made between 56 to 58, the last of which was King Creole, sought to capture some of the unruly spirit and animal magnetism that made him such a sensation and transfer it to the screen. Elvis was patterned as a singing James Dean, a tough and rebellious exterior that shelters a brooding, sensitive soul. In fact... A novel upon which the King Creole, uh, on the novel upon which King Creole is based, Harold Robbins's *A Stone for Danny Fisher*, had originally been purchased as a vehicle for Dean before the actor's untimely death in 1955. The budget and personal uh, and personnel for these early vehicles were of high caliber, as evidenced in the studio's choice of director for King Creole, Michael Curtis, who 15 years earlier had directed Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman in *Casablanca*. Furthermore, Elvis was backed by a Cast of seasoned character actors including Walter Matthau, Dean Jaeger, and Paul Stewart. In 1960, upon returning home from military duty, Elvis's image changed drastically, as you can see on the freak. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> upon returning home from military duty, his, his changed dra drastically. His character, his image changed drastically, and um, 
and altered, sorry, I keep bumping this, altered the course of his screen career at the encouragement of his manager, Colonel Tom Parker. Elvis shed his serious persona and changed his focus to comedy, appearing in more than two dozen musical farces over the ensuing ten years. Uh, yet it is in the films of the early period, before Elvis the Rocker became Elvis the movie star, that one senses the raw energy that drew... I'm becoming Jack Sparrow. The drove a nation of teenagers wild and made an international celebrity uh, out of the Mississippi-born truck driver. In spite of his lack of formal acting and experience in training, Elvis delivers a performance in King Creole that manages to expose his fierce intensity while poignantly revealing his boyish charm. Because it offered him his most dramatic role, Elvis always considered King Creole not only the best film of his career, but his personal favorite as well. And uh, so it gives you the chapter index. Um, and I'm just looking to see if there's anything, nothing as far as extras or anything. Mo most of these are not going to have extras. They could barely fit the, the movie itself. Yeah. But we're just going to show you this one more time. The front cover of Not Girls, Girls, Girls. I do believe some Laserdiscs have commentaries. They have commentary tracks. Really? So yeah, there are. will be some extras maybe on some of these. Interesting. So pretty, pretty nifty. And this would be released in a format that many people would be infinitely more familiar with. Oh, yeah. The same exact cover was used for the Blu-ray. Yep. This time, we actually have Danny Fisher with his <laughs> lovely J200 guitar and even lovelier Banana Girl. Yep. And the back cover is also the same as the DVD. It is. Yeah. Yeah. These came out, these were, these came out much later. Yeah. So, and just for comparison... Everything around this is much more in line with... Oh, no. This, okay, so this is kind of fascinating. Uh, have a look at the uh, little figures of Elvis in there. That's kind of cool. So you see there's the, there's the front. Or that, that was side two. Uh, no, that was side one. This is side two. Now, here's the cool thing. When you look at this, there's uh, one, two, three. Uh, there are... Mostly figures from Jailhouse Rock. Okay. And one from Viva Las Vegas. Interesting. Neither of which was owned by Paramount. Very interesting. So that's sort of fascinating. I have a, I have a feeling that was maybe done in coordination with EPE. Oh, I would imagine. Yeah. I would expect. They use really... Because look... Uh, they've got the Jailhouse Rock figure even on the cover of the set. True, true. Well, and that was the case. Uh, that was the case on the uh, VHS tapes as well. Right. They did still use that little icon, and hey, it's recognizably Elvis. So exactly. Can't it's just not about it too much. Yeah. It's just not a Paramount movie. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to uh, continue this look in just a little bit. We'll uh, be back after these messages. And we are back looking at Elvis laser discs, which is a pretty neat little way to uh, check these things out. A, a cool way to have movies with LP artwork. Sized artwork, yeah. yeah. Now we've got Blue Hawaii, a good picture of Elvis uh, jumping there. Chad Gates jumping, and there's Joan Blackman and another actress whose name I do not know off the top of my head in the background. Also the same as the DVD cover art. It is, and the back as well. And the back as well. Yep. And on a side note, uh, I didn't talk about this when we when I talked about the uh, Blue Hawaii 4K. Mm -hmm. um, in the uh, menu is a shot, the same shot they always seem to pull from Paradise Wine style. At least it's the right state. <laughs> I guess. Uh, it's not, I don't see that on here. And these things tended to not have menus, if I remember correctly. Uh, some of them do. Some of them uh, do. But they usually autoplay when they first oh, come up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, there it oh, is. Oh. Is that it? No, no, but it's a different shot from Paradise Wyan style. Oh, that's funny. That is Rick Richards. It is Rick Richards. That is not Chad Gates. Oh, hey, there's the, there's all the guys. Uh, actually, no. No, the Viva one's the not Viva there. The Viva one's not there. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the, that's all the Jailhouse Rock guys. 
So, and we're gonna take a quick look because these did, now this is kind of fascinating. King Creole had blue and blue Hawaii gets yellow. Has yellow. I don't understand. Again. Night and you and yellow Hawaii. <laughs> Don't swim in the yellow water. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a pineapple color. There you go. For it. It's a reference to the Gates pineapple plantation. Exactly. It's How could we have possibly, possibly missed, missed that? It's pineapple color. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> All right. Blue Hawaii. So these are, yeah, the the Paramount the Paramount ones are, I would say, fairly predictable because they match the VHS covers. This will not be the case for too too much longer. Right. We're gonna get into uh, some of the MGM ones that are more like the '80s VHS tapes. Right. Uh, we're gonna get to those next, but then we save the best for last. Oh um, yeah. These. Oh, I can't wait to show you these, the, the ones that are coming up at the end, because mwah, they're phenomenal. But before we get there, we have this pretty cool 80s uh, thing of, uh, well, I mean, by then, maybe, what, did these VHS tapes come in the, in the early 90s or the late 80s? Uh, both. Both, okay. Yeah, the VHS and uh, Laserdisc were simultaneous formats. This was sort of the high end of the market. Yeah. Kind of like Blu-ray and DVD are today. Sure. Yeah. But, hey, at least this manages to have nothing but pictures of Walter Gulick. Right? High bar. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a low... MGM is known for accuracy. They use only pictures from the film they yes. are promoting. And their label looks like the old 45 labels from the 50s. I love that. Yeah. And so here... Uh, MGM Laserdisc Hits, The Adventures of Robin Hood, An American oh. in Paris, Arnie Hall, The Bandwagon, Bugs Bunny Superstar, Casablanca, Cat in a Hot Tin Roof, Easter Parade, 42nd Street, The Golden Age of Looney Tunes, Goldfinger, Gone with the Wind, Maltese Falcon, Meet Me in St. Louis, uh, Mildred Mil Pierce. Pierce, Moonstruck, Mutiny on the Bounty, Night of the Opera, Now Voyager, Rain Man, Showboat, Sing in the Rain, Sound Like It Hot, That's Entertainment, Treasure on the Sierra Madre, The Wizard of Oz, and The Women, and Deluxe Letterbox Editions of The Alamo, Bells Are Ringing, Ben-Hur, Diamonds Are Forever, Dirty Dozen, Dr. Zhivago, Gigi, High Society, How the West Was Won, The Great Escape, Mad, Mad, Mad World, Manhattan, North by Northwest, uh, we're going to skip that. <laughs> Pink Floyd, The Wall, because I don't want to get demonetized. Poltergeist, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Silk Stockings, Thelma and Louise, Thunderball, 2001, Victor Victoria, West Side Story, Where Eagles Dare, Where the Boys Are, and You Only Live Twice. So <gasps> here's the thing. Seeing the cover, this is a very conscious uh, ev evocation of their record labels because this looks like the 78 sleeve sort of that they had back in the day. Really? Yeah. That's cool. I mean, what a great i what a great idea. So here's, yeah, very cool, very very cool. There's that side and side two. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Hey, not bad. They got Elvis on their uh, on the MGM label. There you go. He joins Hank Williams on a different format. On a different <laughs> format, exactly. But I yeah I I remember getting these and going wow that's just yeah yeah it's very it's a neat for like it is a visually striking format the extra size really does a lot for the graphics yeah now we come to a very special movie the one that's actually uh, actually yeah so Toby Quimper mm-hmm mm -hmm. oh but we have. We just have Elvis and Jailhouse Rock on the back. <laughs> yep. He's, he's not playing the character yeah, there. So, uh, yeah, so this is Follow That Dream. Looks fine. All is good. All is good. Oh, shoot, we missed a Paramount. We'll get, you know, it's all right. We'll it's, all, it's all good. And there's Elvis and Jailhouse Rock in the middle on the back. At least the other two are okay. They're, I mean, it's mostly right, you know. It's mostly right. Three out of four ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> Three out of four ain't bad, really. And again, same deal on the inside. Thing. Yep. All the, all the, I'm not going to read these again because it's the same thing. Same thing. Yep. And uh, again, pretty cool. 
I remember spending a lot of time cleaning these because when they would get dusty. Oh, oh I see it's a nightmare. Little, little things, little things. There we go. Yeah, and the dust can cause these to skip, just like uh, vinyl records skip with. Mm hmm. Yeah. It was nasty. Laserdisc is an interesting experience, though. It was like. Yeah. Uh, it, and it was ahead of its time in a lot of ways. It really was, you know. Yeah. And I will say there have been times when I like the color mm -hmm. on the Laserdisc better than the DVD. Interesting. I think there's a reason for that, but it's very technical, and I don't want to get into it right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, like, for instance, the biggest one was uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Mm. The, I, I got the Laserdisc, and, you know, I, I knew DVD was higher resolution than Laserdisc. So when the DVD came, I was incredibly disappointed. Now, that in particular is a color grading choice that the studio made. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I have the 4K now, so we're good. Anyway, we're going to go back a bit and look at GI Blues. Blues. Hey, we got Tulsa McLean on the front of that. If I'm not mistaken, that's the right freaking movie. It is. <laughs> Shock! <laughs> you know, of all of them, though, this is kind of the easy one to get right. I mean, you could potentially pull a Chad Gates early in Blue Hawaii picture and True. put it on this, but, you know, the palm trees kind of give it away. <laughs> He's not in Germany. At least, I guess, at least it's not easy come, easy go. Because they could, you know, it's just like, you know, at least they know what branch of the military they're in, right? Yeah. All right, so we're going to look at this. This should roughly be the same. as. Oh, now this is sort of interesting. This is a Fox production. Oh, we didn't open the other one because the other King Creole was sealed. Aha, that is correct. So you get to see uh, this is a black and red version of uh, G.I. Blues, and the G.I. Blues font is really freaking tiny we need to take a look at that one too yeah mm -hmm. yep we'll let you know if there's something special we'll do a follow-up and uh so these are but you know i i remember being so excited for this format and just oh yeah uh it's, again such a step up from vhs uh there's a little bit of banding or, or not um, anytime somebody had striped clothing. Yeah, you'd get those kind of moray effects. That's it. And, boy, Frankie and Johnny. With uh, Danny Fisher on the front. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, the back's right, though. That's yeah, actually Frankie. Yeah, the back is the back is right and the back is nice. Dan is it... Frankie and Danny, or that's, it's a Johnny. Well, it's Frankie oh, and Johnny. Yeah, that's yeah, that's Frankie and Johnny. Oh no, no, it's, I was talking about on the, for, because of the front. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's uh, Danny and Johnny. Danny and Johnny. There Danny you go. and Johnny. Yeah. I can, I, can, I can never remember who's who. <laughs> and again, the same as. Uh, and for those of you that want to see this real quick, like on the front. Boom! 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 Great looking disc is indeed. Yep. Yep. Great reflections of the camera and monitor of the set. This is fantastic. Yeah. And uh, there we go. All right. And we're just about to the extra special ones. Uh, we're getting into the MGM catalog proper now. And uh, this is going to be cool. Cannot wait to share more of this stuff with you. But we'll do that after these messages. All right, everybody, we are back looking at Elvis laser discs, and now we are getting to the MGM material. I freaking love this that cover. That is a super cool cover. It is. I remember I saw this one in the Viva Las Vegas that we're about to look at next, and I thought these were LPs, and I was like, that's a cool looking record. It should be. Yeah. They should make it, they should, they should do an LP like this. Yeah. You know, and the back. Equal, uh, all, equally cool. All of the pictures are from the right movie. <laughs> yeah. Once again, MGM showing us high marks for accuracy. <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh. So, yep. And, of course, MGM was behind uh, Frankie and Danny, too. 
True. Or Danny and Johnny. Danny and Johnny, yeah. <laughs> Although I don't know if it's, I yeah, I think it's an, I think that might have been a licensed thing. Could have been. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Actually, take that Frankie and Johnny and slip, slip that out of the case and see if that was MGM because I can't remember now. Yeah, it's MGM. Oh, okay, yep. So, nope. Nope, they do not get high marks. They they, they botched that. But whoever was in charge of these uh, gold tops... Oops, sorry for the bump, folks. Whoever was in charge of these gold tops apparently knew what they were doing because the gold tops seem to be pretty so consistent. So far, yeah. consistent. I say that, and the next one's going to be... The next no, one. the next one is gorgeous. It's my favorite cover of all of them. Really? Yeah. Oh, you know what? You're right. Dang. All right. I know, I know, I think I saved the best for last because of how cool and unique what we're going to see is. But honestly, this is really amazing, too. Get a load of that cover. Is that not cool? It actually reminds me a lot of the making of Viva Las Vegas FTD set. You know what? Kind of inspired by, I, I, think, think, yeah. it might, I think it might be. Everything about this cover... It's great. The painted look. I mean, the, the Viva Las Vegas, just the, the font, the font of their names. The is, fact that it's actually Elvis and Anne Margaret on the cover. Yes. From the right movie. From the right movie. And? Cool back, too, there. Yeah. Elvis, Anne Margaret, and Vegas make a winning three of a kind. Ah, well done, well done, well done. <laughs> That's cool. Let's see. All right. Uh, the, the dynamic pairing of the king at the peak of his career with a vivacious Anne Margaret, plus the sure bet combination of high voltage musical numbers, roaring race cars, and lots of glittery Vegas action make Viva Las Vegas Elvis Presley's most popular movie. The MGM. For apparently, that was said in the MGM story. All right. As a race car driver determined to win the Vegas Grand Prix, Elvis must come up with enough cash to buy the high powered engine for his car. But it's his heart that's racing when he meets lovely swimming instructor instructor and margaret along with its luminous star power its razzle dazzle fun fest of showgirls and its climactic hair raising finale the film delivers 10 knockout songs among them what i say the lady loves me and the smash hit title tune viva las vegas it's the odds on best show in town for the king's millions of fans that's uh that's cool yeah i love that cover i wish they'd kept it like I wish that was the yeah the new edition cover you know yeah that needs to be on everything. MGM, Turner, whoever owns this now, make it happen. Yeah, make it so. Hey, put it on a 4K disc. 4K yeah. disc and LP size like you know, LP size holder with that cover yeah. art. I would love it, and I will 4K my money over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we're dealing with. Oh, we had, this is. Pre MGM uh, label, pre go into the 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 LP. I mean the seventy eight label. Yeah, still nice. A little more basic. Yeah, little yeah MGM UA home video logo here. So you know, pretty cool. And here's the second side. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> yeah. You you. This is a lot less intuitive than you think it is trying to balance this. And now, now we get into the, the interesting ones, the ones that are different from things you've seen before. Yes. The last two have been as well, but we're just going to get even more interesting. Oh, incredibly. Now, as, you know, most of the folks at the channel are CD collectors. We've had folks that say, hey, you know, you know gosh, would you guys look at, like, the double features? And would you see, uh, would you take a look at some of these things for us? And... Uh, we're gonna kind of do that yeah these are technically double features um oh gosh where do you start you know what we're gonna start here start here look at this that is a very very cool cover now okay jamie is it the uh solar effect on there is that actually a shot from spin out yes okay yeah, that's the uh, that's when he's doing the. I think that well, it almost looks like this the the shot where he's like, uh, "That's an old hound dog." Do you know what it also the solar effect and the hairstyle? It almost could pass for a wild in the country shot as well. Oh, I 
Okay. Yeah, I can see that. The face is wrong. No, the face is too fat. But yeah, other yeah. than that. Yeah. It, it's, I can see the, the, the age is not right for yeah. him. But yeah. The, yeah. And then, but yeah, Elvis Presley. And Something with the, what they've done with his hair just makes it not look right for a spin out. But yeah, it is well, a spin out. I think it's because I, I, just, I just think it's because they've just taken the contrast to eleven to make it sort of arty, right. artsy looking. Um, I love this shot on the back. Yeah, from the climb, yeah. the uh, reveal of the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still single, but. <laughs> Are we gonna? Uh, have you showed him the gatefold yet? No. Oh, this you guys are in for a treat. Now, this if you bought the double feature of Spin Out and Speedway, you weren't just treated to a cool cover. Mm -mm. You got something that opened up. Yeah. Now this is cool. Catch Elvis in the fast lane for two fast-paced racing films. That's actually a pretty cool way to it double is. feature an Elvis thing. And this this double feature makes a lot of sense. The movies were from around the same time. Mm -hmm. Same general subject matter. Like these go together very well. Check this out. I have to move back. Very cool. Just so you can see the entire thing. I'm going to zoom in because I know this soft. I know doing this far back softens the focus. So Elvis playing a rare Fender hollow body guitar from the 70s. Fender not known for its hollow bodies. All right. Now we can show this off properly. Very, very cool. At that. Just amazing. It's so big, it doesn't even completely fit in the frame. And all of the shots, I'm going to grab the side here, and the shots are all right. They're all from the right movies. They're all correct. They're all good. Look at this amazing goodness. Has a nice chapter list at the bottom if you yep. want to know what you can search for. Yep. And so now... Oh. oh, we're back to the standard MGM style discs. Yeah, the ones that we've been used to, that look like the seventy eights. Yep. So, oh, we got ourselves a line. Ooh. Oh, that it looks. Might be a little bit of wear. That there. looks nasty. That's not going to come out. So, but I mean, yeah, boy, that's that's a shame. Of course, these have not been touched in a very, very long time. And here is, here is Speedway. Let's see if we have the same thing with Speedway. We do not. Nope, we do not. Okay. Speedway looks okay. Speedway looks okay. Wow. Hmm. It would be interesting at some point to see the transfers see what we're see what we're dealing with as far as um you know i mean it's not going to be qual it's not going to be to the quality that we're used to because obviously these were were these were now these were what 360 they weren't 480 i think they might be a little higher than 360 if i'm remembering correctly but okay. they're not 480 yeah i'm thinking it's like 425 or something weird like that hmm let me look that up well, we're on camera. Yeah, that's all good. Well, we got more uh, of these to check out. But isn't that beautiful? Just, ah, and, geez, and you know what? These were always so tight. Get Man, in. go me. 425 lines of resolution. Ah, well done. Look at that. Just cool. Very cool. And we're, we'll do this on the back too, so you can see the front, the front, back, and the spine. You know, show our little angle so everybody gets to see. So cool. Yeah. And so. That, those are the first two. Apologies for the noise, folks. I'm just going to move this so I can get to... Aha! There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Now, the next two. Fascinating combination. If my eyes don't deceive me, that's 
Greg Nolan and Joe Lightcloud. It is correctly there. <laughs> Watch Elvis go wild in two rousing comedies. I guess you could say that. Is this your know, fair to middle and ballpark? Different issue? versions of rousing. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but still. I like how they've got, you know, Elvis in the arms of somebody on the back cover. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, pretty cool. Yeah. And now, we'll uh, open this up so you all see the full effect. Ah, beautiful. Far back here. And now, look at that. We'll start over here with Stay Away Joe. And we'll slowly move our way over to here. I mean, look at that. Very cool. Just incredible. Oh, man. And standard, as you can see. We'll do, we'll just do real, we'll just do one real quick, like. There's Stay Away Joe. And Stay Away Joe and Love a Little, Love a Little, it, that is a fascinating combination. Again, though, from roughly the same era. Right. So, you know, does, doesn't completely not make sense. No. I think, I think it's a fine pairing. Yep. Uh, you, if... If I had been picking uh, these things by director, I would have put uh, Stay Away Joe with the Trouble with the Girls because they're both directed by Peter Tewksbury. Yep. That would have made an interesting double feature. Yep. And we're just about to get into, speaking of the Trouble with the Girls, we're just about to get into the oddest pairing of two Elvis movies that I've ever seen. I actually think I understand the thinking behind this, but I want to see what you think No first. kidding. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into that. When we come back after uh, these messages. All right, everybody, we are back and we got one more thing to look at for Elvis laser discs. And this is fascinating. <laughs> I, I love the composition. I wish they'd kind of done this format for all of these. I don't know why, but something about the gold, the the gold lettering, yeah, gives it an almost. Uh, I don't want to say like, I think of movies like My Fair Lady and stuff like that having oh, sure. this kind of treatment, right? And I wish they had done these like this because I like it so right. much better. Definitely my favorite cover of the three. Yeah. And it is the double feature of Harem Scarum and The Trouble with Girls, which if you're just going by tone of the movie, this is an odd pairing, but I, I get the thinking. Okay. Other than Elvis's westerns, these are the only period pieces he did. Okay. All right. Okay. The King Rocks the Silver Screen in Two Romantic Musical Comedies is all the back says. But I, all right, I understand. I mean, Harem Scarum is kind of a period piece, right? Because it was supposed to be in, in the silent movie era. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's Which it would put them both around the same time frame, just in different... Uh, yeah, that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Different parts of the world. Right. But look at that. Look at the pictures on the cover and the composition there. Yeah. I mean, I had to save this one for I'm I had to save this one for last because it's just too freaking cool. Speaking of freaking cool. Ba -ba. Man, that is really cool. Oh, it's such a neat format and such a, a such a great use of these things. And if we were going with my director pairings, you could also pair Harem Scarum with uh, Kissing Cousins, because they're both directed by Gene uh, Nelson and produced cool. by... No, they're not both Sam Katzmans, are they? I think... Yeah? Uh, wait. Uh, they, might, they might both be Sam Katzman. Yeah, possibly. But look at this. We'll just start over here. But the picture composition... Oh, sorry. I don't want to make sure we don't have any glare here. I'll take my hand away so you can see. 
Very nice. Beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. And then, and all of these have a similar spine, a similar gold spine with black lettering, as you can see. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Colors with different colors, but the same general idea. So you can see those. But I mean, heavy. Wowzers. Um, but, you know, a great, oops, again, sorry for, uh, can you grab those for me real quick? Sorry, man. Yeah, I didn't even think about it till just now. So, just an amazing format. And especially these. I have such fond memories of watching these movies because of these uh, because of these discs, oops, wow, I keep hitting this, I am sorry. Uh, because of these discs specifically, and I mean, just dang. <laughs> uh, just so cool. And yeah, just so cool. So we thought we'd uh, take a look at some of the uh, LaserDisc collection because this is a format that, you know, like you said, I mean, you didn't have, a lot of people didn't have. It's just really different. And I had these and I absolutely adored them. And uh, I mean, they're <laughs> the packaging is well loved for yeah. sure. And we thought that uh, you all might get a kick out of it. Uh, this is the first half. We do have one more uh, that we, in this little series, uh, covering the live stuff. So keep it here next week. We're going to look at more Elvis laser discs. So be sure to check that out. Anyway, um, yeah, so cool. Just, yeah. And again, like you said, the, the nice larger real estate, you can do such nice things. Oh, yeah. You know, I just... Yeah, I wish they would do. It'd be cool if they did LP like soundtracks. Oh yeah, you know, in this with this design, these artworks. That would be really neat. Yeah, just something different. But uh, anyway, so hope you've enjoyed this look at Elvis's movies on Laserdisc. Just something kind of, as I said, kind of different, kind of unique. So, all right. Anyway, I am Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. We uh, take looks at everything from things that were around when Elvis was around, stories and things, the things that happened to Elvis himself, as well as stories and products and everything from when Elvis was alive all the way up until today and everything in between. Some really different and unique stuff, hopefully giving you a little bit of a fresh perspective on different aspects of Elvis's career while he was alive and after and everything else. So all of this is our endeavor to make sure that Elvis history is not lost to history and to give fresh perspectives and to make sure that Elvis and the information is accessible to this generation, all generations, future generations of Elvis fans, and to keep Elvis accessible no matter what your budget level is because Elvis was accessible to everybody and we like to pay that forward and continue that on as best as we can. Absolutely. So, whoa, I'm just about to... <laughs> just about paid that back uh yeah anyway um we like looking at all of this different stuff and we're not just a youtube channel we're a movement we have a lot of big plans and things that we want to do to impact the elvis community and uh, grow the fan base as we said so uh if you can give us a big hand in that because this movement is people powered that means you so like share comment and subscribe all of that means the world to us. When we grow enough members, or when we when we grow enough subscribers, we're going to give away this. It's a letter opener that was owned by Elvis. This is from 1956. And uh, Elvis got a lot of mail and definitely uh, used this. And he had this for years. Had this for about 15, 16 years, something yeah. like that. So that's pretty amazing. And when we hit 20,000 subscribers, somebody's going to win one. So or somebody's going to win that one. So really looking forward and like, share, comment, subscribe. All that stuff is free. We get, and again, 20,000 subscribers. Subscribing is free. Somebody in that 
some subscriber is going to win this. So that's pretty amazing. We have an Elvis autograph we're going to give away when we hit a higher tier. We've got uh, Elvis FTDs that we're going to give away, all different kinds of things. We want to, again, that's part of growing the community and doing all this kind of things for fans. If you want to help us in our endeavors of doing all of this and a whole bunch more that we haven't even talked publicly about, be sure to become a member of the EAP Society. When you become a member, members get in on the ground floor. Go to EAPsociety.com, click on become a member. Select the tier that you can afford to do. Any amount from whatever the lowest on up is greatly appreciated. All of it helps us out tremendously. And what you get is you get ad-free videos, you get exclusive videos, you get bonus stuff, you get extended videos, and a lot of extras that uh, we uh, kind of keep on for members as a way to say thank you, and especially thank you to Colonel Miles Foreman, our very own Colonel of the EAP Society. We greatly appreciate him. And so, yeah, so all kinds of things coming. We got another one of these. We're looking at more laser discs and hope you've enjoyed this. So until next time, be good to yourselves, be good to each other. And always, TCB. My society, my society, here are the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me.